I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes here before we get started, but um, can you guys hear and see me? I think Camille can. I can hear and see. <laughs> okay. Feel good about that. Oh, Mackenzie, your audio is on. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, so let's get started. My name is Mackenzie. I'm the Student Recruitment Advisor for Indigenous at the University of Calgary. Um, and then moderating our chat is going to be Camille Antiochia. She is our Student Recruitment Advisor for Community. So if you guys have any questions throughout, um, just pop it in the chat and Camille will get back to you. And then at the end, if you have any questions, um, we'll hang out a little bit after so you can actually talk to us and ask your questions. Um, a little bit about me, I actually just graduated from the University of Calgary. I studied, um, I completed a Bachelor of Commerce in Organizational Behavior and Human Resources, and I also completed a minor in International Indigenous Studies. But before I came to the university, when I was in high school, I didn't know that that's what I was going to do. When I was considering university, it was pretty overwhelming. I didn't really know what I was doing as I went through the process. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that my job at the university is to be there for you guys and support you through that process so you don't feel overwhelmed, so you don't feel like you're kind of stumbling through it. Um, you can reach out to me for pretty much anything from the time you're considering what program you might be interested in all the way until you're hopefully getting an offer to be a student at the university. Um, and oh, hi. Sorry, can you put on your mute? Sorry about that. So yeah. Anyways, from the time that you're considering university till you're getting an acceptance letter and everything in between, I'm here to support you. Never hesitate to reach out. Um, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one appointments, um, campus tours and everything in between. Before we move on, I do want to acknowledge that where I'm sitting today and then also the University of Calgary sits in the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta. This comprises of the Blackfoot Confederacy, which includes Siksika, Siksika, Bikani, and Gainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda. This includes the Bearspaw, Chiniki, and Wesley First Nations. Calgary, Calgary or Mokinsis is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region oh. 3. Um, no, I think this is important to talk about because I am a visitor to the Calgary oh, area oh, here yeah. in Treaty 7. I grew up in Treaty oh. 8. I am from Loon River First Nation and I'm Hello. free, but I think it's important to Hello. identify that I'm a visitor and I've been able to live and grow here for the last 10 years. So if you're interested in getting actual write up of what I'm talking about today, you can go ahead and scan our QR codes. The one on the left is for just general things about our programs, admission requirements, um, campus life, residents, all of those kind of things. The one on the right is specifically for Indigenous students, what pathways we offer for Indigenous students, our services, the Writing Symbols Lodge, and everything like that. If you're not from Alberta, this is um, our beautiful province. There's so many things um, to do in our province. If you've never been here, um, there's a lot of different landscapes to go and adventure and take part in different activities in. In the east, you're going to find a desert-like landscape near Drumheller. You can check out Dinosaur Provincial Park. In the north, you're going to find a boreal forest. 
in the west, you're going to find the Rocky Mountains, and you can go and see Banff, see the snowbird. And then in the south, you're going to find Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump, which is where there's more of a foothill, uh, prairie-like landscape. Looking more specifically at Calgary, I love the city because it's young, it's vibrant, no matter what you're into. Sorry, I'm not sure whose mic is on, but do you guys mind muting yourself? It's just at the top of your screen. If it's lit up as green, can you just click it off so it's off? Sorry, everyone. I'm just going to continue. Um, so like I mentioned, you can do so many things. If you're into sports, we've got football, hockey. Um, if you're into hiking, the Rockies are pretty close. You can float the bow. You can go for dinner downtown. Um, if you're worried about the weather, we do have 333 sunny days per year on average, which means although it might be a little chilly, you're going to always see the sunlight. And I know that helps me in the middle of winter stay excited and motivated. The University of Calgary was founded in 1966, and since then, we have become the number six top research university in Calgary. We've got over 27,000 undergraduate students on our campus. I love talking about this because when you're a student, this means there's so many people that you can make connections with, join clubs with, learn from. And then once you graduate, this is a network of people you can lean on for support. Um, no matter what you're doing, these could be your future employees, your future bosses, or just a huge network around the globe of University of Calgary alumni. If you've never been to our campus before, this is an area shot of what that looks like. It kind of looks intimidating if you've never been before, but if you're looking at the Olympic Oval in the top right portion of your screen to the atrium in the middle left portion of your screen, that's about a seven minute walk. So it's not too bad. We are a walking campus. So no matter where your classes are in a typical year, you'd be able to walk between them without a rush and make it in time. A couple other things you'll notice is we're really close to Market Mall. So for students living on campus, there's access to retail and also restaurants. The Foothills campus, if you are considering a Bachelor of Health Science, um, in the coming School of Medicine, that's where that'll be located. You can also see McMahon Stadium. So if you're interested in supporting the Dinos or maybe checking out a St. Peter's game, it's really close. And then you can also see on the left side, there's a transit station. This is our LRT station that can take you downtown in 15 minutes. But then also across campus, you'll find other bus stops that can take you throughout the city. And these, uh, you got a transit pass included in your student fees. So if you're a student, it's not an extra cost and it's really accessible to get across the city. We highly encourage that while you're we highly encourage that while you're a student at the University of Calgary, you take part in things outside of academics, the student experience. So one of those things you can do that is through a club. We have over 300 student clubs on campus, and there's a whole variety of things you can take part in. There's a sandwich making club, a skiing and snowboard club, there's an Indigenous student council. There's so many different things you can take part in as part of a club, and if there isn't something that interests you, you alongside nine other students can go to the Students' Union and have it funded to start your own new club. We're home of the dinos, so maybe you're not a varsity athlete like I am, you can still go out and support all of our teams. Some of the events throughout the year, like kickoff and uh, pack the jack, you can actually go and win part of your tuition just by attending as a student. Um, but maybe you actually are a varsity athlete and you want to take part in one of our teams, you can head over to godinos.com to reach out to a coach to see what their recruiting process is like, to sell, send film and stats for them to recruit you for the year that you're considering joining the University of Calgary. So while I was in university, one of the things that I took a huge advantage of was the great facilities we have on campus that are free to our students in their tuition. So you can do that at the Aquatic Center, which hosts an Olympic-sized swimming pool, the Fitness Center, which there's gyms and other track equipment in there, the Gymnastics Center, the Olympic Oval, you can go skating. This is actually the fastest ice in the world because there's been the most speed skating events 
sorry, speed skating records broken there. The Racket Center, the Outdoor Center. The Outdoor Center is actually the largest of its kind in North America. You can rent pretty much anything you can think of there. Um, canoes, kayaks, life jackets, hiking poles, pretty much anything. So if you are not from Calgary or maybe you're in the surrounding area, but you're still thinking about living on residence, it is an option. We offer a two year residence guarantee. As long as you apply before May 1st of the fall year that you're going to be Sorry, Sorry let me just interrupt Mackenzie. I don't think uh, it's very productive right now. I don't think you're able to hear very well. I think we just need to pause uh, for a second and try to figure out the settings here. I'm very sorry for uh, for this interruption, um, but we'll figure out very shortly. Uh, we'll be right back. I think that's better, if I'm not mistaken. I apologize for that, everyone. Uh, Camille and I are new to this webinar jam setup, so seeing who is muted and unmuted is new to us, uh, but I'll continue. Like I was saying, if you're from the Calgary area or beyond and you're interested in living on campus, it is an option for you. So there is a two-year residence guarantee as long as you apply uh, by May 1st of the year that you're going to be attending school. And so there's double room and single room options. Maybe you know someone that's also going to the university. You can choose to room with them or you can take part in our matching service to find someone that makes sense for you. There's also a single room option. This is done through lottery every year. So in the springtime, they will pick all pick names from all the students that are interested in a single room and it'll go from first to last picked and then they'll go into a waiting list process. If you're interested in living on campus, it is required that you have a meal plan in your first year. There are seven day and five day options depending on what works best for you. So what are the advantages of living on campus? So you are close to your classes, your labs, your libraries, tutoring, study groups. You're also close to all those fitness uh, centers that I was talking about earlier. And then beyond that, this is a great way to meet um, a community, get close to people, have people to study with. Uh, when I was in university, I didn't live in residence, but I did have a couple friends who did. And at the beginning of the semester, whenever we would go to new classes together, they always knew a wide group of people in these classes and it made it really easy for them to um, find people to study with, people to help them before exams, and stuff like that. There are other student supports available on campus though to help our students. So just to go through a couple of these, the Career Services Office helps with anything career related. Maybe you've never written a resume before or you just need help sprucing it up. They can help you with that. Or maybe you wanna run through a mock interview before something, they're also there to help students there. The Student Success Center is probably what I used the most when I was in university. Um, in my first and second year, when I was still getting used to what writing academic papers were like in university, I would book an appointment with them and I would be able to go through my essays to make them better before I handed them in. I also want to talk about the Writing Symbols Lodge. This is formerly known as the Native Center on campus. And the people that work in Writing Symbols Lodge want to be there for our students from the time their their first day on campuses at orientation all the way until they're graduating and hopefully participating in the Indigenous graduation powwow. I actually just took part in this in this past spring and it was really special. The elders that take part in our events on campus were all there and they blessed some different gifts for us that ended up being gifted by our families. So I got this beautiful Pendleton blanket, a medallion from the University of Calgary. And it was just a great way to sum up my time at the University of Calgary as a student. But in between graduation and your first day, they host events, whether those are cultural ones or to help you with one-on-one -on -one, um, academic support. You can also take part in something called OTAP Imiskan, and this is the Indigenous Youth Leadership Program where students from the University of Calgary get to go out into community and work with youth on developing their leadership skills. 
The Writing Symbols Lodge itself is actually a facility, so if you're looking for somewhere to hang out in, uh, you can do that. They also have a computer lab, a smudge room. They also have people um, that work in the office all the time that can be there for academic, cultural, and personal advising. I know you're probably wondering, why are we talking about study abroad? We're still in the middle of a pandemic. Well, usually this happens in your second, third, or fourth year, so we've still got some time to think about that with you guys, but I do want to put it out there that it is an option. You can study abroad in the fall semester, winter semester, summer, or spring, and gain credits to your, your UCalgary degree uh, while you're paying UCalgary tuition and fees, so you don't have to worry about those huge international costs. Uh, Camille, who is on the call, she took part in study abroad while she was a student. She went to Italy and Singapore to complete parts of her degree. I also have friends who went to Scotland and Ghana, so there's lots of different places that you could look at going while you're studying. Work integrated learning is a great opportunity for you to take what you're actually learning in lecture and apply it uh, to your real life, what it's going to be like when you graduate. And so the university does this in a couple different fashions. The first one is through a co-op program, and this is a six to 12 month work term. It's paid and you, this is actually ends up being placed on your degree once you graduate to say that you completed co-op. So that can be really advantageous for students. We also have internships. These are a little longer than co-ops, usually 12 to 18 months, and they primarily happen in the engineering and science faculty. Practicums are mandatory in nursing and education. They are an option in kinesiology. These are the only unpaid work integrated options that the university offers. But a great advantage to these is that once you finish your practicum, it's pretty common for students to end up with a job placement at that organization once they're done. And then you can also take part in research, clinical and field experience, or community engaged learning to enhance your degree. So just thinking a little bit about our faculties, we have eight that house all of our undergraduate programs. We actually have over 250 programs and program combinations for students to choose. And that means that all of our students can find a, a program that is, is unique for them, exactly what they're interested in. So the Faculty of Arts is our largest faculty. You're gonna find a whole broad range of programs, which we'll talk about in the next few slides. The Faculty of Science is more traditional sciences. The Haskane School of Business has a variety of business concentrations. The Schulich School of Engineering has engineering concentrations. The Faculty of Kinesiology is the number one sports science school in North America, and they study movement and sports and the body and how all of those things interrelate. The Workland School of Education is the faculty you'll be under if you're interested in teaching, the Faculty of Nursing for nurses, and finally our Cummings School of Medicine, which has a couple of bachelor programs. So this is the Faculty of Arts, like I mentioned, largest faculty we have. You can see there's a whole variety from anthropology to dance to psychology, philosophy, so many different options. Uh, this is where I found one of my minors in my program. I took International Indigenous Studies. So maybe you have an interest here, but you don't want to take it as your whole degree. You can, for most of these, you can end up doing minors in the programs. So you still get a little bit of that specialization without doing a whole program that way. The Haskane School of Business, like I mentioned, there's a variety of different business concentrations. The one cool thing, though, is that you can actually go into general business. Um, and you can graduate that way, or you can take a few courses before you decide, oh, I wanna be an accountant, or oh, I wanna go into marketing. The Faculty of Science, like I mentioned, more traditional sciences, uh, mathematics, computer science, biochemistry. The Cummings School of Medicine has two different bachelor programs, the Bachelor of Community Rehabilitation and the Bachelor of Health Sciences. You'll find that the Bachelor of Health Sciences is one of our few programs that has a supplementary application. And this is, you're gonna be submitting an essay if you're interested, um, just so that the faculty is able to see if you are going to be successful in the program because there's a lot of writing and research and reading. And so they wanna assess students before they actually get into the program to see if they'll be successful. And then the Faculty of Nursing, like I mentioned, for any of our nursing students. 
The Workland School of Education has a couple different options. We have campus-based and community-based programs, which means if you're living in a rural area and you want to remain there throughout your university time, you can do that and still attain a Bachelor of Education, or you can come to campus and take your classes in person, whatever works best for you. We have a five-year combined program as well, which allows students to complete two different degrees in five years. Uh, so you can become a teacher and then also have a physics degree, whatever you're interested in, there's options there. The Schulich School of Engineering, they actually just announced this year that after completing your common first year, when you apply to one of the concentrations, it's guaranteed you'll get into that in your second year. Your the Faculty of Kinesiology, like I mentioned, number one sports science school in North America. They have a whole variety of uh, biomechanics, kinesiology, leadership and coaching. And then we also have some programs that require previous post-secondary study. The one that I want to point out today is our social work faculty. And so this is actually also an undergraduate faculty, but you have to have completed two years of previous secondary studies in an undergraduate program before you can apply to social work. If you're interested in that, I highly encourage you to reach out to me um, once we talk about my contact at the very end. If you're not sure about how you choose a program, there's a variety of options here that you can check out through career services. And so this lets you look at degree profiles, the career wheel, so what suits you best. And then we also have the Choose You Calgary podcast where you get to hear from students, faculty, and staff, uh, which is available on all platforms. So I don't really wanna talk about this slide too much, but like I was mentioning, 250 program options. So you do this by selecting a major and then you can customize it. So maybe you're adding a minor, maybe you're adding an embedded certificate or taking a combined degree. There's so many different things to make your program unique to you. What does it look like to apply to the University of Calgary? We do have early and standard admission. You go through the same application to access both of those. Basically, if you're being assessed before December, this is considered early admission and we're going to be looking at your grade 11 marks. And beyond that, we're going to call that standard admission and we're going to be looking at your grade 12 marks. No matter when you're applying, we do have a $125 application fee for Canadian students. Um, if you are thinking that's a lot, um, maybe your band is planning on covering your education, please reach out to me. We do have an application fee waiver um, that I could discuss with you. When you apply, you're eligible to apply for two different programs. Uh, generally, we tell students to apply as their first choice for the ones that are more competitive. And then their second choice is an alternative program that they're interested in, but maybe a little bit less competitive. And when should you apply? You should apply as early as possible so that we can review you uh, periodically throughout the year. Um, even if your grade 11 marks weren't that great, we can take a look at them before we get your grade 12 ones in in the winter and then in the spring. What does our admission requirements look like? In general, you're going to be looking at five faculty specific high school subjects for every program, which we'll talk more specifically about in the next slide. But there are some programs that do have some additional requirements. So like I mentioned, the Bachelor of Health Sciences has a supplementary essay. Fine Arts and Dance and Music has an audition. And then Fine Arts and Visual Studies has a portfolio that is required. These are some examples of those five faculty, sorry, five program specific requirements. For a Bachelor of Arts in Law and Society, you're going to need English, the grade 12 version, three approved courses, and a fifth approved course, course or option. And between those five courses, you're going to want an average in the mid 70s. If you're looking at the Bachelor of Science in Plant Biology, you're going to need English 12, Pre Calculus 12, and then two of the following. Chem 12, Bio 12, Physics 12, Calculus, or Computer Science, and then a fifth academic course or option. Those five courses should be in the low 90s if you're looking at plant biology. We do have three alternate admission pathways for Indigenous students. So as long as you self-identify on your application, we'll be able to consider you for these three. The first one, it's like you're applying 
through the general admission pathway, but maybe you just don't meet the admission average, we're going to be able to boost your average by 5 to 10%, um, as long as you self-identify as depending on the program that you're applying to. The Indigenous Admission Supplementary process is new this year, and it's going to allow you to submit a personal statement or program-specific supplementary information um, because maybe you're missing a course, maybe your school didn't offer um, calculus, but you needed to get into the program, you can write why, or maybe you've had a really tough past couple of years, but you still want to be considered um, for those programs. If you have more questions about that, reach out to me and I'll be able to set you up with the appropriate information for what those personal statements look like. And then finally, the Indi Indigenous Student Access Program. This is sort of a separate program. It's a one-year program that allows students to transition into university. So maybe they're coming out of high school and they're really uncertain about university and they want extra support. It's a great option for them. Or maybe they've been out of school for a while and they're looking for support as they get back into academics. It's also a great opportunity for those students. Um, going more into the Indigenous Student Access Program, uh, the only requirement is that you finished English 12. Um, with at least 65% or higher, and that you talk to our lovely ISAP advisor, Reagan. Um, but if you don't have a 65% or higher in English, that's okay. You can also submit a su supplementary application for that program. For any of these programs, if you get in uh, because you self-identified as Indigenous, we are going to ask for proof of Indigenous heritage, and there are options for Métis, Inuit, First Nation status, and non-status individuals. If you have any questions, once again, you can reach out to me. My email is actually on the slide. It's indigenous.recruiter at ucalgary.ca. Understandably, university is a big commitment for a lot of families. So the university offers $17 million in scholarships, bursaries, and awards annually. And so a brief overview of what our awards process looks like is here. If you're looking at automatic awards, these are going to happen when you fill out our generic application. That's how we're going to consider you. And if you find out you have an offer to the university, you'll also find out if you've received an automatic award. Our high school entrance awards will show up in your student center a day or two after you apply. This is a 15 minute check yes or no survey. I highly encourage that you do it. I feel like a lot of students don't and then they find out later from their friends how easy it was to get these high school entrance awards. So don't forget to do them. And then our prestige awards are our highest valued awards. They're also due the earliest, December 1st, uh, but you could win up to $25,000 a year for your program. They're not as simple as a check yes or no survey. They are going to take you a few hours because they include some essay questions in the application. But once again, you can find that in your student center a day or two after you apply. Awards for Indigenous students, these are just some of the examples of specific ones you Calgary offers, but if you are Indigenous, you're welcome to apply to ones that are not Indigenous specific. I actually encourage that you do that, um, but these are just the ones I wanted to highlight today. Why are we talking about awards? Because tuition, um, like I mentioned, is a big commitment for families. This is uh, an estimate of what you'd expect in your first year based on this past year, um, but they are subject to change. And this can, you can look for more specific, uh, what this might look like for you on our cost estimator on our website. So you can select whether or not you plan on living in residence, um, what faculty or program you want to be in, and other things like that to see a cost estimate that's more specific to you and your program. This is an overview of what our application process looks like. I know we're only in September, so let's consider the first couple steps. First off, you should be researching the, our different programs and program requirements. You can be reaching out to me to talk about these, make sure you're on the right track. And then once we get to October 1st, you're going to want to submit an application soon after that on our website and submit that application fee. By March 15th, you want to upload your initial documents to your student center so we can review you. The earlier, the better. By December 1st, you want to apply for the Prestige Awards and March 1st for the High School Entrance Awards. And then you should periodically, no matter what, be checking your student center on your to-do list. If 
you are admitted using one of our indigenous admission pathways this is where you're going to see a checklist item that says proof of ancestry or if you're expecting to need to submit a supplementary application uh, this is also where you'll find that by may 1st if you're planning to live on residence you're going to need to apply and then finally hopefully in the spring around may 1st into the summer you're finding out that you got an offer to the university so that sums up our webinar today. I apologize for the early in, earlier interruptions. If you're interested in getting in contact with me, maybe you want to come see the campus, we can book a private tour, or you want to book a one-on-one -on -one meeting today, you can reach me at indigenous.recruiter at ucalgary.ca. Once again, my name is Mackenzie, and if you guys have any questions, Camille and I will hang out, um, and we can figure out how to unmute you, or you can put it in the chat, whatever is up to you. Um, I did just want to mention, I know earlier in the chat, we had a question about um, guidance for international students. And I did just want to share this, that we have a dedicated international team to support students um, in different regions, depending on where they're currently um, located. So if you send me uh, in the chat here um, a note of uh, where you are and where um, you're hoping to get some more support from, I can connect you to the right resources. I'll also leave my email if you just, if you'd prefer to reach out via email, um, feel free to reach out to me as well, just community.liaison at ucalgary.ca. I'll leave that in the chat for you. Um, and I see you have a question here. For the co-op positions, does the student have to apply by himself and pass a job interview? Do you want to jump in on that, Mackenzie? Sure. So you have to apply to the co-op program to take part in it. Each faculty is going to have different requirements for taking part in the co-op um, position. Um, when I was in the business program, one of those was you had to take a specific course and you had to be in at least second year. Um, so there's a variety of different um, requirements depending on your faculty. So they'll have to apply to that and meet those requirements. And then they will have the expectation that they're applying to co-op positions on their own and they're taking part in the hiring process on their own. Um, the university does provide some support with that. There are job boards. Um, there's usually networking events so you can learn about different opportunities. But in general, it's just like you're in you're out in the world looking for a job on your own. It's just that you're going to have a little bit more support from the university um, and then that you're getting recognition on that once you complete the program on your degree. So I'm not sure if we addressed, I know it was also asked if they needed to pass a job interview. Um, and yes, they would. So many companies actually have, when they post their different co-op positions, many of them will indicate that it's specifically for co-op students. So typically co-op students will be competing with other co-op students. And um, so it's not like they're competing with a broader um, a broader group of people. So they are the positions that they get are specifically catered for co-op students. Uh, can the student still get a degree if he could not find a co-op position? Absolutely. Um, co-op is an option and it's not a requirement to obtain a degree. Um, when co-op students graduate, they will get an additional comment on their parchment saying that they partook 
um, in a co-op program. But otherwise, you know, it, it is not a mandatory requirement. It is a great way. However, we do like to encourage our students to um, participate in these kinds of programs. That it is just a great way to get a leg up in the future um, in terms of after you finish your degree um, to have that experience already and already build those industry um, relationships. But if the, if they started a co-op program and say they couldn't find another position to fill the requirement before they had to, um, that's okay too. It's not like you're going to get docked for any reason um, and you're still able to use those co-op positions on your resume in the future, um, even if you didn't finish the program itself. So I think that might be it. Um, I do see there is a comment for from Girish here. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but I will connect you with our India recruiter. Um, her name is Alexis and she would be absolutely happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, and she is also available for one on one, a one on one meeting a consultation, if that's preferable to you. Um, but I will, I have your email here. So I will send, I'll connect you with our India recruiter and feel free to ask her any questions. I believe we might also have a, a webinar specifically for students in India. So I will forward that information to you um, so that you can attend that event. Otherwise, if there's no more questions, I think Camille and I will wrap up the, the live stream. Oh, Mackenzie, I, I think you're... Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, is a student only allowed to apply to two majors? Uh, so, yes, uh, I guess two per application year. So if you apply in October um, through March, and you apply, you're only allowed to choose two options on your application. So yeah, one could be computer science and the other could be software engineering, um, but you're gonna wanna make sure the more competitive program is your first choice, and then the less competitive one is your second choice. Um, just because if you got into your first choice and it's less competitive, we won't consider you for your second choice um, because you already got into the first one. And as a last thing, we do just want to uh, invite everyone. We have an open house on October 2nd. It will be virtual this year, but we still will have many of the different activities and resources that we would plan for in person. So there's an opportunity to take a virtual campus tour, to connect with uh, different faculties and just different discovery sessions for different curriculums. So I highly encourage you, you do need to pre-register for that. I will send the link in the chat for anyone who's interested. 
but I would really encourage you if you want to learn more about the University of Calgary to join us in our open house. So if there's no more questions, I am just going to wrap up the call. Um, but if you still have more, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, but once we get a couple more minutes here without one, I, I will end it. <laughs>